Mm. If you ask about mankind, you will get many ideas. If you ask who is Jesus, you will get many ideas. Today I want us to look at what God's word tells us. First, who is God? Second, who is man? Third, who is Jesus? And fourth, what do we need to do in response to these truths that the Bible tells us? Before we begin looking at the scripture, let's pray. Father God Almighty, we thank you that you have given us your word and your word is truth. Would you guide us in the truth today? Thank you that you have given us your Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us into that truth and gives us understanding. May you open your word to us today for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So my first question, who is God? Or I might ask it a different way. What is God like? Now, the Bible tells us many things about God. And we're not going to look at all of those today. But we're going to look at three things the Bible tells us. In fact, these are three things that God himself tells us. When we open our Bibles to the very first page, to the book of Genesis, in chapter 1 and verse 1, God reveals himself to us. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What does God tell us about himself? He is the creator. If we look in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 17, Sura kumina saba, in verse 24, wa makumi mbili na ime, the Apostle Paul is preaching. Mtume Paulo na ubiri, the people he is preaching to didn't know God. In fact, they had many idols they were worshipping. So Paul begins to preach and explain who God is. In Acts chapter 17 and verse 24, Paul says, God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Again, God tells us He made everything. He is the Creator. Next, we look in the book of Psalms. 102 verses 24 and 25 I said, oh my God do not take me away in the midst of my days your years are throughout all generations of old you laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. Amen. So who does God tell us he is? He tells us he is the creator. Now, I don't know what you studied in school. What your science teachers told you. But in many schools, 
They deny God is the creator. But we have God's own revelation. He tells us he created everything. Something else that God tells us about himself. We look in the book of Exodus. I'm sorry, this is, a, we're going back and forth through the Bible. It doesn't make it easy to follow, I understand. In Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 through 17, we read the law, the Ten Commandments that God gave to Israel. And we see in these commands, God is showing us His holiness. That God is the perfect giver of the law. Then if we read in the book of Leviticus chapter 19, in verse 2, speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy for I the Lord your God am holy. Amen. So we understand that if God is holy, then the law that he gives must be holy as well. So God is holy, he is the perfect giver of the law. Again in the New Testament. Tena katika Agano Jipya. In the book of uh, First Peter. Katika kitwaraka wa kwanza wa Petro. Peter writing to these believers. Petro anaandika kwa waamini wao. First Peter chapter 1 verses 15 and 16. Mstari wa kwanza sura sura 15 mstari wa 15 hadi 16. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Now there are more verses in Scripture that would tell us this. But we can see from the beginning to the end. God reveals himself to us Mungu kwetu. as a holy God. Kama Mungu God is the creator. Mungu ni mumbaji. God is holy. Mungu ni a third thing that we read about God. Kitu cha tato God is eternal. Mungu that means he had no beginning and he has no end. Hana mwanzo ama mwisho. Psalm 93. Zaburi makumi kenda na tatu. Psalm 93 in verse 2. Here is what we read. Makumi kenda na tatu. Mstari wa tatu. Your throne is established from old. You are from everlasting. Amen. Kichichako cha enzi kinaishi milele na wewe hauna mwanzo na mwishu ya unaishi milele. In Psalm 19, verse 2, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to Deuteronomy. Acha turudie nyuma katika kumbukumbu la Torati. Chapter 33, mstari wa 13:3, verse 27. Sura 13:3, mstari wa 12:7. Moses is speaking to the children of Israel. Musa anazungumza na wana wa Israeli. 
Actually, I'll start in verse 26. There is no one like the God of Jeshurun who rides the heavens to help you and in his excellency on the clouds. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you and will say, destroy. Hapana aliyefanana na mungu, eye ushuruani. Ajaye amepanda juu ya mbingu ili akusaidie na juu ya mawingu katika utukufu wake Mungu wa milele ndiye makazi yako na mikono ya milele chini yako na mbele yako amemsukumia mbali adui akasema aka, akasema angamiza amen amen God reveals himself to humanity Mungu amejitambulisha mwenyewe kwa wanadamu. He has told us he is the creator. Ametuambia yeye ni muumba. In this universe that we live in, the world we live in, it's not eternal. It was created. Na dunia ambayo tunaishi haitaishi milele, iliumbwa. God tells us he is holy. Mungu anatuambia yeye ni mtakatifu. He's the perfect giver of the law. Yeye ni mkweli ambaye anapana sheria ya kweli. God is eternal. Mungu ni wa milele. He is the everlasting God. Yeye anaishi milele. No beginning, no end. Hana mwanzo ama mwisho. That is the God that we worship. Ndiye Mungu ambaye tunayemwabudu leo. But the world doesn't understand God in that way. Lakini ulimwengu haumwelewa Mungu katika njia hiyo. The world thinks of God as this old man with a long white beard. <laughs> Maybe he's like our grandfather. <laughs> I don't know if you grew up hearing things like that. But in America, that is one of the ideas of God. Lakini huko Marekani watu ambao wanafikiria Mungu kama vile. But the Bible doesn't give us that picture. Yes. Lakini Biblia haikupatii sura kama hiyo. The Bible tells us a lot more about God's character. Biblia inatuambia mengi zaidi kuhusu Mungu. But those are the three things I want us to understand today. Inatuambia vitu vitatu ambavyo tunataka kuelewa leo. So, God reveals himself. Mungu anajitambulisha mwenyewe. God also tells us as humans who we are. Mungu tena anatuambia sisi wanadamu sisi ni wanadamu. Again, in science class they will teach you something different from what the Bible says. Lakini katika sayansi huko shuleni wanakufundisha kitu tofauti ambacho hakifatani na Biblia. In science they will say that there was some living organism. Katika sayansi watakwambia kulikuwa viumbe fulani vilikuwa vinaishi and this thing grew and it became a fish. And then it grew legs and it curled out of the water. And then it learned to walk. And then it became a monkey or an ape, a chimpanzee. Kisha vikajoka kiki ama chimpanzee. And then finally it became a human. Kisha hapo akakuwa mtu. Is that what the Bible tells us? Hiyo ndio Biblia inatuambia. In the book of Genesis. Katika kitabu cha Mwanzo. Chapter 1 verse 27. Sura moja mstari wa 127. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Mungu akamuumba mtu kwa mfano wake. Kwa mfano wake, e Mungu akamuumba mwanaume na mwanamke. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Mwanzo sura mbili mstari wa saba. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Bwana Mungu akamfanya mtu kwa mavumbi ya ardhi. Akapumzia pumzi ya uzima e mtu akakuwa nafsi hai so what is the truth about man sasa ukweli ni nini kuhusu mwanadamu we are created by God in his image tumeumbwa na Mungu kwa mfano wake that means we are dependent upon God yes. 
tuna e, inamaanisha sisi ni katika upande wa Mungu God is the creator Mungu ni mumbaji we are the creation sisi ni viumbe so 139 Zaburi mia makumi tatu na kenda. Listen to what David says here. Sikieni yale ambayo Daudi amesema hapa. So 139 verses 13 to 16. Mstari wa makumi tatu hadi kumi na sita. Zaburi mia makumi tatu na kenda. For you formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed and in your book they all were written. The days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. Amen. Who is man? He is the creation of God. Mwanadamu ni nani? Ni kiumbe cha Mungu. Now, I know sometimes women are sensitive. Ninajua mara eh mara nyingine wanawake wanajisimama huko. And I want to make sure women you understand. Na nataka kufanya iwezekanavyo wa mama muelewe. When I speak of man, wakati ninazungumza kuhusu wanaume, I am not excluding you as women. Siwa, siwa kama vile the word man means humanity. Yes. E, neno wanaume inamaanisha ulimwengu. God makes it very clear in Genesis chapter 1. Yes. Mungu ameweka wazi katika mwanzo sura moja. That it was both the male and the female that were created. E, kama mwanamke na mwanaume ndio wameumbwa. God is the creator, we are the creation. Mungu ni muumba na sisi ni viumbe. That means you and I are dependent upon God. Na maanisha nyinyi na sisi ni viumbe vya Mungu. But the Bible tells us something else about us is humanity. Na Biblia inatuambia tena kitu fulani kwa ajili yetu sisi viumbe ama wanadamu. While God is holy, kwa sababu Mungu ni mtakatifu, there's some bad news for you and I. Eh hiyo ni habari mbaya kwako na mimi. We are not holy. Sisi hatuko watakatifu. We have broken God's law. Tunavunja sheria za Mungu. It wasn't that way in the beginning. Haikukuwa hivyo hapo mbeleni. When God had created Adam and Eve and put them in the garden. Wakati Mungu aliumba Adam na Eva kwa katika jardin, they were perfect. Walikuwa watakatifu. God said, I'm giving you everything to eat from these trees and the herbs of the field. Mungu akawaambia na wapatia kila kitu mkule kwa hivi vyote viko shambani except for this one tree. Ila hii muti mmoja tu. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, do not eat. Muti wa wa kutoa mema na mabaya msiukule. And what did Adam and Eve do? Sasa Adam na Eva walifanya nini? They disobeyed God. Waka, waka vunda ya And Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5 chapter 7. Make sure I get this correct. I do not want to speak an untruth. nini katika kitabu cha Warumi? Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Warumi sura e, tano mstari wa 12. Therefore just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Kwa ajili ya kosa ya mtu mmoja Mungu akaalamiza dunia na kwa sababu wote wametenda zambi akapungukiwa na utukufu. Because Adam disobeyed God then everyone born after is born a sin. Kwa sababu Adamu alivunja sheria ya Mungu na yeyote yule ambaye anazaliwa leo anaitwa eh, mwenye zamu. We were created perfect in God's image. Tumeungwa vizuri katika umbo la Mungu, but man chose to rebel against God. Lakini wanadamu tukachagua kukua wale mbele za Mungu. Therefore today we are not holy. Kwa sababu hiyo leo sisi si watakatifu hapa. We are lawbreakers. Sisi ni wavunja sheria. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Warumi sura 3 mstari wa 
for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. People don't like to hear that today. Yeah. Quite often you hear, well, deep down inside, people are really good. Yeah. But that's not what the Bible teaches. In Romans chapter 3, beginning in verse 10, here is what Paul says. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands God. There is none who seeks after him. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Mfupi hata tuseme kama ilivyoandikwa ya kwamba hakuna mwenye haki hata mmoja hakuna hakuna afahamuye hakuna mta, e, amtafutaye Mungu kwa wote wamepotea wameoza wote pia unataka kuendelea na msomo huko chini people don't like to hear this truth watu hawataki kusikia ukweli huu but God tells us the truth about ourselves. Lakini Mungu anatuambia ukweli kutuhusu sisi wenyewe. We are sinners. Sisi ni wenye dhambi. We are not holy, but God is. Hatuko watakatifu kama vile Mungu. God, I said, is eternal. Nilisema Mungu yeye ni wa milele. The Bible makes it clear. Biblia inafuata inaiweka wazi. But mankind has been created by God. We are not eternal. We are just temporal. Because we were created. You and I have not existed from all eternity. We all were born into this world at a certain time. But God has always existed. And the Bible makes it clear that because we are sinners that we will face a judgment. We will die physically. Romans 6.23 for the wages of sin is death. But now I just read the first half of that verse. What we have earned for our breaking God's law is death. Because we are Sinners who will die and face judgment. Back in Genesis chapter 3. When God pronounces judgment on Adam and Eve for their sin. This is what God says to Adam. Genesis 3.19 in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground for out of it you were taken for dust you are and to dust you shall return wajasho la uso wako utakula chakula hata utakapo uridhia arzi ambayo katika hiyo ulitwaliwa kwa maana umavumbi wewe na wewe mavumbini utarudi Physically, you and I are going to die. Yeah. The only way that isn't going to happen is if Jesus returns before we die. Yeah. And I sure hope he does. 
na eh ninatamani ifanyike hivyo It would be wonderful if Jesus would return right now while we are together. It is But the Bible makes it clear that we are going to die and we are going to face judgment. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 10. Mstari wa For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done whether good or bad kwa maana imetupasa sisi sote kudhihirishwa mbele ya kiti cha hukumu cha Kristo ili kila mtu apokee ijara ya mambo aliyotenda kwa mwili tena kuendeleza the writer of the book of hebrews E, wa cha wa tells us in chapter 9 verse 27 sura kena wa it is appointed once for man to die and then face the judgment ni, ni God is the creator Mungu ni mumba. humans are the creation tuko God is holy Mungu ni mtakatifu. mankind is a sinner Wanadamu ni watenda zangu. God is eternal. Mungu ni wa milele. Humans are not eternal. Wanadamu hatuko wa milele. But the Bible doesn't stop there. Lakini Biblia haikusimamia hapo. The Bible tells us about Jesus. Biblia inatuambia kuhusu Yesu. In the Gospel of John. Katika injili ya Yohana. John chapter 1 in verse 14. Yohana sura moja mstari wa 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Naye neno alifanyika mwili, akakaa kwetu nasi, tukaona utukufu wake, utukufu kama wa mwana pekee atokaye kwa baba. As we read the New Testament, kama tunasoma eh kitabu cha eh Agano Jipya, we find out a lot of information about Jesus. Tunakutana eh mambo mengi ambayo yanamhusu Yesu. And we know that Jesus left the glory of heaven. Na tunajua Yesu aliacha utukufu mbinguni. He became a man. Akakuwa mtu who was without sin. That is an important thing for us to understand. Though Jesus was born as a human, Jesus had no sin. In fact, he kept God's law perfect. Lakini alishika sheria za Mungu vizuri sana. In Matthew, katika Mathayo Jesus tells us that he didn't come to do away with the law. But he came to fulfill it, to complete it. We read in 1 John chapter 3 verse 3 I think I got the wrong verse. Yeah, no, there it is. 1 John chapter 3. Waraka wa Yohana wa kwanza sura 3, verse 5. Mstari wa 5. And you know that he, Jesus, was revealed to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Nani mnajua ya kuwa yeye alidhihirishwa ili aziondoe dhambi? Na dhambi haipo ndani yake. Amen. So, who is Jesus? Sasa Yesu ni nani? Jesus is God. Yesu ni Mungu. He is the son of God. Ni mwana wa Mungu. And he left heaven and he came to earth. Akaacha mbingwa kuja duniani. He kept the law perfect. Akazishika sheria vizuri sana. He never sinned. Hakutenda dhambi. That means he is holy. Na maanisha yeye ni mtakatifu. But Why did he leave heaven and come to earth? Lakini kwa sababu gani ameacha mbingu akaje duniani? 
He came to pay the penalty for your sin and my sin. Alikuja kulipa e bell ya zambi zako na zambi. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 20. Mungu Yesu anasema katika Mathayo sura 20 Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28. Mathayo sura 20 mstari wa 12 na na 8. He is dealing with an issue with his disciples. Alikuwa na eh, anazungumzia kitu na wanafunzi wake. Everybody wanted to be elevated to first place. <laughs> Kila mtu anataka kuwa eh, mkuu. So Jesus is rebuking them for that attitude. Mu, yesu akaza kuwakemea kwa hiyo. And he says that if you want to be first, make yourself last. Akawambia, ukitaka kuwa wakwanza, jifanya kuwa wamwisho kwanza. In verse 28. Katika mstari wa kumbini na nani. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Amen. Kama vile mwana wa Adamu, asivyo kuja, kutumikiwa, bali kutumika na kutoa nafsi yake iwe pithia ya wengi. Amen. 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 So why did Jesus come? Kwa sababu gani Yesu amekuja? He came to die for sinners. Mm. Alikuja kufa kwa ajili ya zambi. In 1 Peter 3.18 Katika waraka wa kwanza wa Petro 3.19 For Christ also suffered once for us, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 5, beginning in verse 6. Warumi sura sura tano mstari wasita. For when we were still without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Kwa maana hapo tulipokuwa hatuna nguvu, wakati ulipotimia, Kristo alikufa kwa ajili ya waovu, kwa kuwa ni shida mtu kufa kwa ajili ya mtu mwenye haki, lakini yawezekana mtu kut, eh, kutubutu kufa kwa ajili ya mtu aliye mwema. Amen. Paul also tells the Roman believers. Paulo anaambia wa Kristo wa Rumi. In Romans chapter 8 that what the law could not do for us. Akawambia, nini ambayo mungu haweza kaifanya kutu? God did for you and I by sending his son Jesus Christ in the flesh. Mungu alifanya kwa jini yetu kwa kumtuma mwana wetu wa peke katika mwili. So that Jesus might take the condemnation in our place. The writer of Hebrews tells us about Jesus giving himself as a sacrifice. In Hebrews 9, beginning in verse 11. Katika the writer tells us that Jesus came as our high priest and when he went in to make the sacrifice it wasn't with the blood of bulls and goats like under the law but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all having obtained eternal redemption. Lakini Kristo akisha kuja alie kuhani mku wa mambo mema yataka yataka yoku hapo Kwa hema iliyo kubwa na kamilifu zaidi isiofanyika kwa mikono maana yake isiyo ya ulimwengu huu. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 10, the writer says something very similar to what he said in chapter 9. Katika kitabu cha iki kitabu sura kumi. 
But this man, after he had offered one sacrifices for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. So Jesus left heaven, he took on humanity. He lived a perfect life. He went to the cross to die for sinners. To take your sin and my sin upon himself. He experienced the wrath of God in our place. But did it stop there? No, he didn't. If Jesus died and was buried and that was it, we would have no hope. But Jesus rose from the dead. In Acts chapter 2, as Peter is preaching on the day of Pentecost, Wakati Petro alikuwa kihubiri eh, siku ya Pentecoste. Acts chapter 2 and verse 24. Matendo ya mitume sura mbili mstari wa makumi mbili na ine. Whom God raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Mstari wa makumi mbili na ine inasema. Ambaye mungu alimufufua akiufungua uchungu wa mauti. He goes on to say in verse 32 This Jesus God has raised up of which we are all witnesses. And we can read in the Gospels as well about the resurrection of Jesus. When the women went to the tomb early on uh, in the morning on the third day, they found that Jesus was not there. And the angel said, He is not here, He is risen. In Romans chapter 1, Verses 1 through 4. Paul is talking about how God has called him to be an apostle. And he is an apostle of Jesus Christ. Who was born of the seed of David. And declared to be the son of God. With power. By the resurrection from the dead. Jesus was a perfect man. He died for sinners. He rose from the dead. That's good news for you and I. Because the eternal holy creator God must punish sin. In the created temporary sinful creation of God, mankind, stands in a place of judgment. God didn't leave it to you and I to try to solve our problem. But in his mercy and his grace, he looked down upon his creation. And he sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sin.
We've looked at who God is. And who man is. Who Jesus is. How should we respond to that? God has given us the truth. What do you do with this truth? I don't know where each of you are today. Whether you are clothed in the righteousness, righteousness of Christ. Or whether you are still dead in your sin. I never make an assumption. I never say to myself, everyone sitting in the church has been born again. Because as I mentioned in the beginning, I was in church all my life. I knew the Bible. But I did not know Jesus. So what do you do with these truths about God, man, and Jesus? The Bible tells us exactly what we need to do. In Acts chapter 2, verses 37 and 38. As Peter is preaching the sermon, the people who were listening, they came under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And they asked Peter and the others, what must we do? Here is Peter's response. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Another day when Peter is preaching, in Acts chapter 3, here is what Peter's message is. He tells the people, in killing Jesus, I know that you did it out of ignorance. But God has fulfilled all that he said through the prophets in Jesus Christ. So in uh, verse 19 of Acts chapter 3. Peter says, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 17, when Paul is preaching, he is preaching to these, we already mentioned, he is in a city and they are worshipping idols. And he also mentions the ignorance of the people. Acts 17, beginning in verse 30. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Sasa anawaangazia watu wote wa kila mahali watubu kwa maana ameweka siku atakayo wa hukumu walimwengu wa haki kwa mtu yule aliyemchagua naye amewapa watu wote utabiti 
kwa mambo haya kwa kumfuata katika wafu amen so the first thing that we need to do in response to the truth of scripture we need to repent or turn away from our sins. The next thing that the Bible tells us we need to do. Romans chapter 10. Beginning in verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Kwa sababu ukikiri Yesu kwa kinyo chako, ya kuwa ni bwana na kuamini moyoni mwako ya kuwa mungu alimufufua katika wafu, Utaokoka. Amen. So we repent. We turn away from our sin. We believe on Jesus as Savior. John chapter 3 verse 16. Hopefully we all know this. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish. Now, many people today are confused about what it means to believe on Jesus. Many people think, I've heard the stories of Jesus. I believe he was a real man. But it's all knowledge in their minds. They don't really know Jesus. To believe on Jesus means we turn everything over to him. We surrender ourselves. We give up all, as was read this morning from the Matthew passage. To believe means we lose our life for the sake of Jesus. When Paul and Silas were in prison in in uh, the city of Philippi. When God releases them, they are speaking to this jailer. And the jailer brings them out and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Their response is this. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Amen. We must repent of our sin. We must believe on Jesus as the only hope, the only way of salvation. And we must confess Jesus before others. Yes. In the Romans chapter 10 passage, Paul says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. We must confess Jesus as Lord. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Basi kila mtu atakaye nikiri mbele ya watu nami nitamkiri mbele za baba yangu aliye mbinguni. Bali mtu yeyote atakaye nikana mbele ya watu 
Nami nitamkana mbele za baba yangu aliye mbinguni amen. amen. So our response to these truths, who is God, who is man, who is Jesus? Ejibuetu kwa hii maswali, Mungu ni nani, Yesu Kristo ni nani? Repent, believe and confess. Yes. Tubu amini. Tubu na uamini na 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 wache zangu. Maybe you have already done that. Labda tayari umefanya hiyo. Maybe you have already said Jesus, I want to follow you. Labda umesha kusema Yesu ninataka kukufuata. You have already cried out and God has made you his child. Unamfuata Yesu Mungu mzima kama vile Mungu eh, mwaminifu ambaye yeye anaishi milele na na mwenda sheria. If that is true in your life, I say praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So if you already belong to Jesus, what are you going to do with these truths that the Bible teaches us? You have the responsibility to tell others in the world these truths. Amen. If you're one today that has not repented of their sin, has not believed on Jesus as Savior, has not confessed him before men. Yes. Scripture would tell us today is the day of salvation. Yes. Now is the accepted time. Amen. Do not be hardened in your heart against the truth of God's word. Amen. The children of Israel. When they were in the desert, their hearts became hard. Many of them died in the wilderness. The writer of Hebrews encourages us, do not be like them. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have given us your word, which is truth. Thank you that as Jesus said in John chapter 17, Sanctify them by your truth. Yes. Your word is true. Amen. Lord, your word does sanctify us. It makes us holy. It sets us apart. God, I thank you today for my brothers and sisters in Christ who are here. Lord, may you give them a boldness, a desire to share the truth of your word with those around us. Amen. There is so much confusion in our world about who you are. Mm -hmm. So much confusion about who Jesus is. So much confusion about who mankind is. Your word makes it clear. Yes. Find us as your servants, being faithful Amen. to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. Amen. Father, I pray for any sitting here today that are still lost in their sin. God, would your Holy Spirit overwhelm them with this truth, with conviction, and would you bring them to yourself today? May they repent, may they believe, may they confess that they might be saved. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.